Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at something uh, rather interesting that I noticed with the RX 6900 XT. Um, as I've just been sort of messing around with the car, trying to get a get a higher score out of it um, on the oscilloscope. So, yeah, let's let's just kind of um, get into it. I have no plan for this video. <laughs> like, <laughs> welcome to why I hate making videos. I, okay, so here we are in Windows. Um, and we're just going to run, this is, I believe, stock settings. Well, I've overclocked the memory a smidge, but, uh, yeah, we're just going to run this at, like, stock settings. And we're going to run some Firestrike Ultra on this. Um, and so, watch the, watch the voltage. And I'm not sure if the scope is currently positioned properly on the, the voltage level. We're at 50 millivolts per division. I might have it too low. There, there we go. Okay, yeah, and so you can see how the core is, like, dropping super deep on the voltage. Right, like, it's it's falling, like, way out of range. Like, that's the bottom of those spikes. And let me just bring the trigger in on that. Oh, boy. Man, those are so low. Yeah, so those are down to the, like, 900 millivolt, 800, yeah, sub foot. Like, 800 millivolts, you know, super, super low, and also I apparently do not have the trigger on the... No, it is on channel 3. Okay, there we go. Um, anyway, so you saw those massive, like, downward spikes. Um, and... I have, like, I have no plan for this video, so... <laughs> This is this is just like yeah. So we have these massive downward spikes, and if you mo zoom into them, it really looks like it looks like some kind of idle state, right? Like if we tried to capture a few of them, like th this this just looks like the the core decided, hey, I'm just gonna idle, um, because it's like it just dropped the voltage way down. Also, if we oh the the scope I, actually I think did it trim it off or oh no yeah. So anyway, so you can see the voltage is just like falling off a cliff for some reason, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, and it does this, like, every single frame render, basically. Multiple times per frame as well. Um, so, crazy aggressive power management going on there. Um, anyway, we're just going to escape out of that test. And now we're going to switch back to uh, Windows. And the interesting thing is, is we can actually get rid of that behavior. Or at least we can move that behavior around. So if I set this to now, like, 2400 min clock, and we run the same workload, um, and then we're going to put this back away. So you'll also notice that right now we're already like, like we're just loading into the benchmark and we're now sitting at 970 millivolts, which I don't think it was doing that previously. Um, like that is, that is an effect, it's more noticeable once we get into the really high clock speed settings. Um, And there, and now it's running, and you'll notice, like, previously I had the trigger all the way down to, like, 950 millivolts. Now we're at around a volt. Right? And if we... Why is the trigger being... There we go. Yeah, so we're down around a volt, but we still have that same sort of, like, oh, the card's going to, uh, you know, some kind of idle state there. Um, and the thing is, we can move this, this voltage level up. That's, that's like the really interesting thing for me. Um, we, we can move that up um, by just changing the min clock, which is like super... Well, su like, I think that's cool. Um, I'm really annoyed that I figured this out this late into testing the card, because if I had figured this out earlier, I would have been totally capable of doing like oscilloscope testing of all of the different modifications I've been doing to the card. Um, but uh, yeah, I only figured it out like yesterday. Yeah, I think basically, like, yesterday I figured out that this was a thing. So, anyway, um, what did I want to do next? Like, there's a bunch of weird effects with these cards, so... I'm going to set the max clock to 2772, and we're going to set this to over 2600. And at this point, I think it should flatline. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, it might might not do it yet. Oh, 
Okay, yeah. There we go. So yeah, and now now you can see there's there's no more downward spikes. They're gone. This looks like completely static voltage control. And man, the white balance on the camera really doesn't like that the oscilloscope screen. It's supposed to be pink, not like blue. Anyway, um, yeah, so you can now see like the, the downward spikes are just gone and we just have the regular sort of switching noise from the frame render cycle left over. Um, so theoretically with this configuration right here, it would actually be p possible to do, like I, I could have do done like how effective are all the cap mods, but unfortunately I've already modded the card and I've only just discovered that this is possible like yesterday. So I'm not undoing all of the modifications to get a comparison between the stock VRM configuration and, and this VRM configuration. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting. Like this is just a transient, right? Like if we, yeah, like that's just a pretty normal transient. Also, I think the way I have the oscilloscope hooked up right now might be picking up the switching noise of the VRM running. So if you're wondering why the, the line is so, so wobbly, um, that's probably just switching noise from the phase because the, the probe connection that I have right now is hanging out right behind a power stage. And technically there is a ground plane in the way, but I don't really, I'm not sure how well that's shielding. So yeah. Um, how well that's actually like shielding it from, from the switching noise. Like anytime you run in a, like anytime I put a probe anywhere near a VRM, it's just always a potential issue that it's going to pick up switching noise. Anyway, so we're going to end that. Um, end that run. I'm going to zoom back out to like 10 milliseconds. Um, we're going to do something very different this time. So we're going to go back to full screen. We're going to go to Firestrike Ultra. And now we're going to do a custom run. I'm just going to run GT1 and we're going to run it looped and we're going to have it windowed. And this is going to be also very interesting, I think. So, yeah, so we need to wait for this to, to load in. Hopefully I don't have the clock set so high. I eh, know this shouldn't crash. At least I hope it shouldn't crash. Anyway, so if we go back to the oscilloscope right now, um, it's still very blue. Um, but you can see that our, like, waveform is just nice and steady right now. Um, and if I now lower the min frequency, which previously would have, like, put a bunch of, like, idle states in, nothing happens. So this is super strange, is, like, in windowed mode, that, like, aggressive idling system that the card runs just goes away, apparently. Right, so that goes away completely. But without touching the voltage slider, right, I'm just tweaking the frequency slider here. Where did our voltage go? It's way down here. So moving the frequency slider around moves the voltage around, which is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Because, um, yeah, like it, it just kind of does that. Um, So actually, we're, we're going to pull this down a bit. So right now, we're averaging like 1.15 1, 1 volts average voltage. And if I set it to 2743, we're now averaging 1.18 volts, right? On the RMS, RMS voltage reading right here, we're getting about 1.18 volts on average. Um, and if I lower the voltage, it goes down to, well, if I lower the frequency, it goes down to 1.07 volts. Now, if I start s messing with the voltage slider, it'll lower the voltage even more. Um, so the voltage slider seems to act as some kind of like, like I, I don't know why it's like, like right now this says 1200 millivolts, but we're not getting anywhere near 1200 millivolts. We're getting like 140 millivolts less than that. Mind you, that probe is hooked up to the output of the VRM and we're referenced against the oscilloscope's ground, not even like the, the ground of the GPU proper. So that voltage reading is definitely higher than what the actual silicon is getting by a few tens of millivolts. Um, if I had to guess, probably like 30 or 50 at the current le level of power draw that we're pushing. Um, and yeah, so we're not getting anywhere near 1.2 volts. So really this should be some kind of like offset slider or something. Um, though admittedly, I don't think you can, like it does have an upper boundary. So if you keep raising the frequency, the voltage doesn't just keep going up. Um, 
I'm not sure what the step increments are. Also, I think I'm going to crash this eventually. Yeah, no, it just sort of walls at 1.18. Um, this is 2837, which it won't hold. Um, 2887. <laughs> Yeah, so at this point, like, the, the thing is, and now we're running, like, if I run this uh, without the benchmark running in the background, it'll actually, oh, it just crashed anyway. So, yeah, these, these cards are fun. Um, so, yeah. Um, 6900 XT is freaking weird, yo. So, yeah, that's, like, a really interesting thing, because, like, I'm not sure what to think of this. Um, so, on one hand... Uh, I'm, well, okay, one, I'm annoyed that I've only discovered this very recently because I could have done all of the oscilloscope testing on the V-Core rail that I wanted to if I had just realized that you need to set the min clock and max clock to some really high level and then, then the card basically runs static voltage. Because um, as you can see, like, past a certain point, you can keep raising the frequency and the voltage doesn't keep going up. Um, and also, once you set the min frequency above a certain certain uh, level, it also just max like stops doing that like idle drop thing. Um, also, if you're running windowed, that idle drop thing just goes away apparently, uh, which is also really funky. Um, so if we do that, like, you know, um, so basically running windowed. Like, I'm not, like, so theoretically running windowed applications on a 6900 XT, at least if you're running with the stock frequency configuration, should be significantly less power efficient than running with, uh, than running applications in full screen. Um, okay, well, that's because the, the boost settings are still really low. All right, let's set it to 2750. Bam. Yeah, so we're back up at 1.15 1 volts, but if I, I change the min frequency now, it just doesn't make a difference. Right, and if I go to a full screen run of Firestrike Ultra. I should have turned off system info for this testing. It's not necessary. Um... Uh, yeah, like, this is super interesting. So, power consumption-wise, I think, like, windowed might be pulling, like, should be pulling more power. Now, I would guess that when the card goes into that sort of, like, low voltage, like, lower voltage idle state that it goes into every single frame, it's probably not actually doing anything, so your, like, power consumption from having the voltage quite high wouldn't make a difference, right? Like, this is the same settings, and we just run the app at, at full screen, and, like, Look at like look at how much it's dragging the voltage down whenever whenever the opportunity to to idle arises, right? Um, so yeah, and then then if you just run the min frequency at like, I think it needs to be a little over twenty six hundred in order to to kick in to like flatline. Um, yeah, so I think like. Power consumption-wise, this this should have some interesting effects. Um, though I don't think it would be very significant, because if the chip is deciding to go into idle, it shouldn't really be doing anything. And it's kind of like the difference between, like, idling at uh, 1.2 volts and idling at 1 volt. It is actually a significant difference in terms of power consumption. It's just that the initial power consumption... Like, here's the thing. When your chip is running full load, um, it's you know, max max power draw might be like 400 watts. And then during the brief, you know, couple millisecond time period, actually less than millisecond, we're, we're at 10 milliseconds time scale right now. And, and those those idle spikes are, are even shorter than that, like way shorter than that. They're somewhere in like the few hundred microsecond range. So those few hundred microsecond idle, idle times, um, like, it might be the difference between idling at 50 watts to idling at 25 watts, which sounds like a really big difference, but you have to consider it only happens for, like, 100 microseconds in a 16 millisecond frame, which is, like, not very relevant, probably. <laughs> like, that's not... Like, as a percentage of energy use, that's just not really a big deal. Um, or at least I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I don't currently have any kind of super accurate power monitoring hooked up to the to the card, so yeah, we, we can't check that. And the software power readings, I don't know that they would necessarily pick up on the difference, but yeah, very very interesting that the the card does this with the the core voltage. Um, 
And that the min clock actually sort of sets your 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 voltage behavior. Um Anyway, that's that's it for the video. <laughs> that's all I really wanted to show you is just um yeah, the the voltage behavior on these cards is super weird. So, yeah. Um I guess uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, uh, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, all of those help out immensely with running the channel. At, at this point, now that I've realized that, you know, we can, we can do these oscilloscope measurements, I'm kind of like, I really want a second card now. <laughs> <laughs> Five months later. Well, there... Uh, no, I do... Like, I really do want a second card at this point. Because I think... It, like, it would be so awesome to be able to, like... Like, compare my card against a reference card. Like, a stock card at this point. Or actually, even a reference card would be really cool for a comparison. But, um... Yeah, um, so Patreon, Teespring would be much appreciated. I'm almost certainly not getting another 6900 XT. I might get a, well, the thing is the other cards in AMD's lineup aren't very overclockable. Like there's the 6700 XT. That's, I think that's now only, like apparently that's now limited to three gigahertz or something. But like the 6800 and the 6800 XT, like you can't overclock those properly. So <laughs> I'm not interested, <laughs> but um uh, yeah, anyway, so support links in the in the description. Much appreciated if you check them out. That's it for the video, and uh, goodbye. That is the wrong mouse. Um, there's the stop button.